What the hell is Saw Sports or whatever that last call was talking about? What the hell is that? It's a forester from Free Love, man. So the trade deadline has passed for the MLS, and the Dynamo ended up making a move on trade deadline day. And it's a move that a lot of people have been speculating around, and they got it done and got their guy. Um, in this video, I'll go ahead and break down the trade, what the Dynamo ended up giving up and what they ended up receiving, as well as this explaining about Darwin Quintero, because this is what this video is essentially going to be all about, of what he brings to the table is is a good a good addition to the team and, and all those things but uh we'll see how i truly feel at the end of this video so before i get to this video make sure you guys subscribe to south sports tv because if you guys want content in all the teams here in houston like the astros the dynamo and the rockets and any other team here in houston and the houston area this is the channel to be on so make sure you guys subscribe uh let's get that subscriber account going up and probably hopefully maybe match south sports because we're both the same thing it's just that we cover the other teams while saw sports covers the houston texans and um also make sure you guys like and comment on this video so that way you guys can be featured for comment of the day for the next dynamo video and also make sure you guys stay tuned till the end of the video so i can feature comment of the day but with further ado let's go ahead and break down this trade so the Dynamo made a trade with Minnesota United to get Darwin Quintero and a third round pick that's actually the 70th pick overall in exchange for Marlon Harrison and $600,000 that's going to be split evenly as target and general allocation money. Um, and this is also going to be dispersed within two years. So I don't know what that necessarily means. Sounds kind of stupid to me. But they get six hundred thousand um, dollars that they can use towards transfers, and I think that I'm sure they're happy with that amount of money, which they could use to bring in, bring in some player, some talent for them. Because you know Minnesota is also kind of trying to work things out amongst themselves as well. They were in the U.S. Uh, US Open Cup final where they ended up losing to Atlanta United, and I think with the addition of Marlon Harrison could definitely help out that team. So fortunate that we didn't get to keep Marlon Harrison, but I think we weren't really using him. So if the other team wants to get him, you know works out in their favor and obviously Dynamo ended up receiving Darwin Quintero a player that they've been speculated for a long time all the way back to when he was playing for Club America um, but unfortunately they weren't able to get him and they receive a third round pick uh, 70th overall and I really don't know how I feel about this pick and the only reason why is because I'm just not a fan of the MLS draft it's not that I don't like that the, the, the MLS has a draft I just don't I don't think that uh, men's college soccer has a really big talent pool um, I can honestly give you guys a full on rant as to why I don't like the MLS draft also maybe make an even bigger rant of why I don't like uh, some things that the MLS does but that's going to take a really long video and uh, I'll try to break that down but if you guys really want that just go into the comment section and tell me that you guys want that too. so I have a reason to actually really do it but essentially, to sum it up, though, the reason why I don't like the MLS draft is just the men, the talent pool that the men's college soccer world offers is not very much because there's not that many men's college soccer programs in the NCAA. And also, if you really think about it, guys that are, are getting playing time in Europe, that are starting with the, you know, their regular starters or getting coming out of the bench. There's a lot of 18-year-olds. It's not shocking to see an 18-year-old. It's not shocking to see a 16-year-old playing with the first team. And so if you think about it, these guys do four years of college. Then they go into the MLS. At that point, they're either 21 or 22, depending on when their birthday was. Or even 23, depending, you know, if they went the JUCO route before they went into the, into, you know, that, into going into playing for a college soccer team. So these guys are now 20 like around 21 to 23 going into the MLS um, and they have to fight for a starting position when honestly if you're 23 years old in Europe you're probably a regular at this point and maybe even getting called up by your national team so essentially I just think college soccer really slows down the process of a lot of young players that could honestly just be going if they're really that good they could honestly go into the MLS and 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 play already and get those professional minutes and play amongst pros play amongst players with experience but they're not because they chose to get their education which I'm not completely against 
I just think that college soccer is just very limited talent as far as the men's side. I'm not talking about women's side, just the men's side alone. And so that's why I'm really having a problem with the MLS draft. But, you know, with Top Ramos, who a guy that does work with younger players, maybe he'll actually utilize the young players. So if this third round pick, if it's a guy that, that we end up utilizing, whether it's from the bench or even finds a way in the starting 11, or we send him to Rio Grande Valley and they actually use him and we actually develop him that eventually brings him back to the Dynamo, then I'm all for it. But as of right now, I just don't see the pick as any value as of right now. But somehow maybe prove me wrong, uh, MLS. Maybe even prove me wrong, MLS draft. But as of right now, I just don't see the value in the MLS draft. Um, but Darwin Quintero is obviously the main thing. And I think giving up Marlon Harrison and $600,000, I think giving up Marlon Harrison is probably a smart move. But the $600,000, that's money that we could be using, but it's spread out through two years in some way. So, I mean, maybe it doesn't really hurt the Dynamo that much as far as salary cap goes. Um, which that's another problem I have with the with soccer as a whole, with MLS as a whole. I should probably say that specifically, but I think that this is a good trade. We got a player that the Dynamo have been speculated for a long time. Um, you know, they finally get their guy, but can he bring some value to this team? And I'll discuss that in this next part. So let's talk about Darwin Quintero. So Darwin Quintero is a right winger and can also play striker. Um, He's 32 years old, which isn't a terrible thing. I know that like I talk about age a lot, and I'm talking about how I want the Dynamo to start getting younger. He does have experience. He's a, he's actually a, can be used as a spark plug. Now, he can definitely be something of value coming off the bench, or he could be also a leader for this attack. Tab Ramos has, has uh, clarified that he does want this attack to be more aggressive, and I think Darwin does really speak to what you want from him. He's also Colombian, but does have his citizenship with Mexico, though he has played with this, uh, the Colombian national team. Um, in 2019 alone, he made a total of 30 appearances, scored 10 goals, had 5 assists, and had 5 yellow cards. And in those 30, star uh, 30 appearances, 76% of them was as a starter. In his career, which is going from Liga MX, obviously MLS, just his whole entire career, um, some of it, the teams that he's been highlighted with has been Santos Laguna, Club America, uh, obviously Minnesota United. And in his career as a whole, he had 472 appearances, scored 136 goals, had 121 assists, um, had 64 yellow cards, two yellows that went straight to red, and, and three red cards. So he's had a pretty long career. Um, obviously, if you're 32, the you know you you played for quite a while time. Um, he does have a lot of experience. He he obviously can score goals. Um, I think that this is not necessarily a terrible move. He comes with experience. I think we do need some experience in the attack. And if he's going to play as a right winger, I think that this is maybe a short term solution to the possibility of losing Albert Feliz, who has been speculated with some teams in Europe. He has said that he wants to finish out his contract that's going to end in 2020, actually before the summer transfer window opens up. Um, if I was a Dynamo, I would either be trying to extend him because I would not want to lose Albert Feliz and get nothing in return. So either I extend his contract and then when a team makes an offer, send him, his, send him on his way, or I sell him right now and get something for him. Um, so that's how I feel about Albert Feliz, just because of the fact that he has said that he wants to leave the Dynamo because he wants to go play in Europe. So I I think that this is definitely a temporary solution until they find a young winger that could come in and step up big time. Also, with, with the fact that Darwin Quintero has been going up in age, he can play striker, which could also be very important depending on what formation the Dynamo end up using. You still have Mar Manotas, but there's also speculations with him getting transferred. There's teams like Cruz Azul that's interested in getting Mar Manotas. You still have Christian Ramirez and you have uh, Darwin Quinteros. So you can still make some move with some uh, with some ideas with Darwin Quintero. So he does give you some diversity as far as playing on the wing, which is probably something that we definitely need some more depth in the wing and um, can come in also as a striker when needed. So essentially, I'm not entirely against this move. I think the only thing is I would be more excited about this move if it was like a few years ago when he was leaving Club America to come to the MLS. But obviously Minnesota ends up getting him. And he ends up, you know, having a pretty good career with them as well as become, you know, he was the captain at some point. 
with the Minnesota United, but I just think if it was a few years back when he was more exciting player to get, I'm all for it, but now he's 32. So now we're also kind of going into where he's near the end of his career. Maybe he's going to start declining. Um, so those are some things to think about. So this isn't necessarily a long-term solution. This is a short-term solution that will hopefully in time, once we develop somebody for that right wing or that striker position, could come in and just take the job and, and the Dynamo are in a better place. Like I said, man, this is the way the Dynamo are going to go, which I hope that it is with Tab Ramos as their, as their manager, is... Uh, developing players and build a sturdy foundation for the Dynamo. But for the meantime, I think Darwin Quintero can definitely be a, a helpful person, especially with experience, can help develop our talent even better. So that's how I feel about Darwin Quintero as a player. So let's go ahead and uh, conclude this video. So the Houston Dynamo finally get a guy that they've been wanting for a long time. I honestly say if it was a few years ago when he was going to leave Club America, I'd be more excited because of the fact is that he was a whole different player at that time. Yes, he's still he's still that same player, but obviously with being 32 years old, that does take some consideration. But if we want to be realistic, though, we're talking about the MLS. And unfortunately, it is labeled the Retirement League for a reason. And I mean... It, who's to say that Darwin Quintero cannot be a crucial player? A lot of people were very skeptical when Dynamo went ahead and got Vicente Sanchez. And even though eventually they started using him more, he provided a lot of spark. He ended up being more praised than anything after after all that criticism. And like I said, man, 32 isn't completely bad. I mean, it's the age normally when you see soccer players start going to a decline. But... I think Darwin Quintero will be fine. I don't think this is a long-term solution. I think this is just something that we're going to have in the meantime as we find a young winger or striker that we can develop to put him in that starting 11. Um, whether it's maybe we have that player already or you know we find that guy. And so I think that Darwin Quintero, as far as the short term, is a pretty decent decision. Um, so that's how I feel, and and I think that this we'll see how this t season goes. I'm not really going in with some high expectations for the season, so I think um, anything better than where, where they were this year, I think will will definitely exceed my expectations. But I'm I'm gonna see how this goes. Like I said, this is a player that Dynamo have been wanting for a long time, so they finally get him, and I mean hopefully it pays off for them. But uh, before I end this video, obviously we're gonna go into the comment of the day. So the comment of the day is going to still waiting for greatness and he said keep putting in work bro if it wasn't for you i wouldn't know anything going on with the dynamos um so just one little correction it's dynamo dynamo is already plural uh i know that's not like a, you know something i should be really going that much crazy about but yeah it's just dynamo it's not you know no s at the end um, but everybody says that but yeah, thanks man You know it's comments like that that helps me keep going with these videos because I know Soccer isn't necessarily the most popular sport here in the US, but I know that there's been a grow there's been a lot of of uh, Excitement growing towards the sport mainly because of the World Cups But obviously more people are focused in the other leagues in which obviously we're talking about the EPL La Liga Bundesliga Champions League and even though I understand why, because just the, the comp competition is just so much more intense over there. But, you know, we do have a domestic league, and it's a league that we should definitely try to start supporting um, in order to hopefully maybe make this league not necessarily as great as those leagues, but definitely compete with some of the leagues that we compete with over here, like Liga MX. And um, maybe hopefully one day we'll see them compete with some teams from Brazil or Argentina. But uh, but yeah, so thanks. Thanks for uh, for commenting. And if you guys want to be featured for comment today, make sure you leave a comment on this video because this is where I'll be going to to pick up the next comment for the next video I make on the Dynamo. So without further ado, man, that's all I got. So chunking up a deuce. Y'all stay saucy. Perfect.